Today, on Home Theater Fanatics, we're going to take a look at the Zadu Z9X Media Player. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Giles, and this is Home Theater Fanatics. Today, we're going to be talking media players, and specifically, Zadu. Now, I've got the uh, Z9X in for review, and this is the, the baby Zadu model, but this thing is packed with features, um, you know, the same features that are in really all of their devices, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, before we really kick this off, make sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell. And I'm curious, before I tell you about this thing, have you guys used a media player before? And if so, which one? You know, there's Zadu and there's Zoom and there's Zapedia, there's Nvidia Shield and Plex. There's a whole bunch of them out there and they all have a different mix of features. So I'm curious if you've already dipped your toe into this particular market. Now, before we get deep into this ZX9, I wanna talk a little bit about what a media player is and what you should be looking for in this kind of product. So a media player is just that, it plays files. Now, there's all kinds of files that you can play, everything from MKV files to the actual Blu-ray files or, or DVD files that you pull off from a disc or even an ISO file. And this kind of player pretty much will do everything, right? And that's what differentiates it from others. Now, how does it play the files? Does it do the HDR, Dolby Vision, blah, blah, blah. Now that's specific to each player and we'll get into the features of that in just a little bit. But I think it's important that you recognize that that's the core function of this device. It's not intended to be a streamer, although it can do some streaming, but if you're a hardcore streamer, this isn't the right one. You'll wanna get a streamer to sit alongside of this. Now, some people would argue, well, if you're gonna get a streamer, get something like a shield that can do everything. Well, I'm gonna say maybe the Zadu can do a better job playing files than your Cody's and your Plex's and those kinds of things um, because this is a purpose-built standalone device and this is what it does. And man, it does it really, really well. Uh, okay, so now that you know that we're gonna do Zadu and you know as a media player, I wanna jump into the product portfolio so you can get to know the company a little bit better. Now they've been around for a while and they have four main products that we'll talk about and then one other product, but let's go ahead and jump on over to their website so we can see exactly what they've got on offer. Now let's jump into the Zadu product portfolio. So we're on their webpage now, and if you go up to products, you'll see a drop down, and there's a whole bunch of stuff listed here, but you've got four of the new version of the product and then four of the old version of the product. So we're going to focus on the UHD 3000, Z100 Pro, Z10 Pro, and the Z9X. And of course the Z9X is the product that I am reviewing here, which is their entry level product. They also have a Neo X product, which does a lot of the same things, but it's targeted more at the two channel music kind of environment. So I'm not gonna touch on that one so much. So I'll focus on the four main media player products. So starting out at the low end, I'll click on this guy and see if this will jump over. So the Z9X, um, and remember that all of these boxes are gonna do the same thing, right? They're media players, but as you step up through the product line, you get to nicer looking units and units with more bells and whistles and features. So the Z9X is the smallest and most basic. Um, and you can see that this is the evolution of what used to be uh, the Z9S, and then before that, the X9S before that. And, you know, there's upgrades on processors and all those kinds of things. But from a form factor point of, point of view, this unit has a set of connections on the side where you can attach an external hard drive. And I don't mean like a USB attach, I mean an actual hard drive with SATA and power. And let's take a look at what you've got on the back of the unit. So you've got your network, HDMI out, in, optical, AV out, RS-232, power, on and off, you've got your two uh, antenna. And so this does dual band 2R2T, MIMO Wi-Fi. Uh, you have a remote box. Okay, here on the side, you can see the SATA and USB 3 connections. So this is where you would plug in that hard drive that I mentioned before. And on the other side, you've got your USB. And on the front, it looks, looks really nice. Now, moving on from here, which is the smallest unit and the only unit that does not support any type of internal drive, you go up to the Z10 Pro. The Z10 Pro looks like that same unit, but swollen, right, it's taller. And that's because you've got a hard drive bay built in on the side. So we'll pop over to specs here, see if we can see the back of this guy. So you see the hard drive on the side. Uh, on the other side, uh, you've got SATA connector, 
RS-232 and your USB 3.0 connections. On the rear of the unit, you can see your gigabit LAN, your HDMI in and out, optical. You've got a coax. Then you've got a old style video port, your left and right RCAs, power on and off. Um, and remember the big differentiator here is that you're getting up into RCAs and you're also uh, moving up to an internal hard drive bay. Now from here, we jump up to products that I think look a lot better physically. Now let's jump over to the Z1000 Pro. This is the first unit that is a normal component size unit. Um, and it looks quite good. Uh, right behind this panel, this is where they hide the internal hard drive bay. Um, so you get front access to, to hard drive here as opposed to the side access or no access on the previous units. Like I said, it's full size. Um, you've got your coax, your video, left and right, optical, HDMI in and outs, as well as your gigabit LAN. Um, now it calls out uh, intelligent cooling for the system. And then obviously it has Wi-Fi as well. So you can, can you continue to step up through the feature list here. Uh, and that will take us to the top end model that they sell, which is the UHD 3000. Now this guy looks really, really good. Um, it's got two internal hard drive bays that are accessible on the front. Uh, so that makes, you know, it, it doubles up the internal capacity. All of these can, of course, mount to external storage that you might have on a NAS. Uh, so you're, you're not limited in any of them other than the size of uh, and number of hard drives that you can install internally on the units or attached off to the side. So let's jump over to specs and we'll see a few more things that differentiate the unit. Uh, as I mentioned, two hard drive bays. It's got a really nice case, best looking one of the lot. And that front does flip up and down uh, to expose the, uh, the hard drive bays. Um, on the rear, you step up to XLR outputs, right? So if you want to integrate this in with a two channel system um, in your theater and have a higher level of output for your left and right, you do get access to there. The digital outputs are grouped together. So you got video, coax, optical. Then you have an IR input, USB, USB audio input. So, um, you know, if you have some type of source device and you want to use this as the DAC, you can do that. Your USBs, your gigabit LAN, your HDMIs, and then a full RS-232 connector here on the side. And then way over here, you have your power. So that is a look kind of top to bottom on the product line of the Zadu ecosystem. Um, everything from the ZX9, uh, which we're looking at today, all the way up to the UHD 3000. And remember, the experience will be the same, the same UI. And the ultimate goal of all of them is to be a media player, play back that 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision on your television um, or your projector, maybe not in Dolby Vision, uh, but they all do the same thing, but they have different bells and whistles. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the Zadu experience, right? So when you turn on your box, you're gonna get a screen like this. Now I've gone through all the setup um, and that's very straightforward. You'll be able to handle that no problem. Um, but once you get to this screen, uh, this is this is where you do your stuff. Now, your primary app is going to be Home Theater 4.0. And this is what everyone expects to see with a media player. So we'll go ahead and jump in there so you can see what that looks like. Um, when you enter in, the two areas that you'll typically use the most are movies and TVs. Uh, that's what I use anyway. Uh, but you also get latest and, you know, it breaks down things by drama, romance, and all of these things automatically. So I didn't configure any of this. It just was able to do it. Now you can go in and configure all of these items, but this is kind of out of the box after you add a source and it goes through and indexes your content. So let's look and see what movies ended up looking like. So, uh, you know, it gives you that typical kind of uh, cover view of movies and you can scroll up and down. Now you'll see some didn't uh, identify the movie correctly and then pull up the, the artwork and that kind of stuff. And this is where you need to go in and then edit these. So you have to anticipate that it won't be able to identify everything that you have. Uh, you know, maybe your file name's weird, something like that. So, you know, this is obviously the movie Poltergeist, but, uh, you know, it's, it's it found it as Der Poltergeist. <laughs> so I guess that would be the German language version. Um, but uh, for the most part, it was able to grab 
a good a good portion of my movie collection and identify those all appropriately. Now, uh, let's take a step back here and we'll jump over to television. Television, it didn't do quite as good a job of identifying everything. So, you know, if you point toward your folder where all your files are and, you know, it finds some stuff but doesn't find other things, what you'll want to do is uh, pop out to unmatched. And when you go in unmatched, it will show all the stuff that it was not able to identify. And for me, that was quite a bit of stuff. So, uh, you know, I've, I've ripped things with weird names, apparently, that it wasn't able to identify. So you'll have to go through and then uh, identify these specifically, and then you can edit your poster information, and that kind of stuff. But it did not like my Anthony Bourdain stuff at all. Now, if you take the next step over, you'll get to sources. And for me, I added uh, two folders that I have out on a NAS. So my movies and my TV shows folder, and it was able to identify the items inside of that. Um, and, uh, you know, it looks like it's still scanning TV shows now. And it's done uh, 338 out of 1,285. So maybe it will actually identify more of those items uh, than it has already. Now, moving back through, uh, we'll go back out to the top level and uh, go through a few other items. Media Center is a place where you can kind of see all your different file systems that you have out there. So, uh, you know, if let's, uh, let's take a look at SMB. And then you can see that I've got my QNAP NAS out there and uh, it will identify items on your network for you automatically. So you can go in and then map those as sources for your content. The browser just pulls up a web browser. Uh, but another area I think that's interesting is quick settings. And, uh, you know, to me, I would not have called this quick settings. I would have named this every setting that you could possibly ever think of ever because this box, it does everything. And, you know, I thought to myself, how do I go through all these things and talk about all these settings? And the short answer is, it's impossible. <laughs> I'm, I mean, there's there's no way. You could do probably 20 videos on this device talking about all of the features and functionality that it has. Um, I mean, the, anything that you could possibly think of to do, uh, you know, this thing has a setting for it. Do you want to do... Uh, HDR to SDR. Of course you can do that. Do you want to do custom edits? You can do that stuff too. I mean, everything that you can think of, plus the kitchen sink is in here, which is awesome because it makes this player so very, very, very flexible. Now, one thing that is brand new that I really appreciate um, because, uh, you know, I, I like to use my devices for music as well, is with the newest firmware that just came out, oh, maybe about a month ago, I guess, is uh, the capability to integrate with Rune, uh, a Rune server was added. Now let's jump over to my desktop and I'm in the Rune app. So this is installed on my PC, which happens to be my Rune core as well. And if you look at uh, settings and then down to audio, you will see that the Zidoo Z9X is listed there. And uh, we have selected this as our output. Um, and you can you know click that and see all the the different devices that you can use as output. We've got it selected. And when we hit play, and you can see down in the corner that it kicks off and starts playing Rune through the Zidoo. Now I love this because I can eliminate one device that I need in my media center to play music, you know, and, and all of my content. So use it as a Zidoo to play all my files, uh, movies, television, and music. Really all I need outside of that is a very competent streamer and I am good to go. One other thing to mention um, here is in this apps section, this will show everything that's installed and you can install other things on here as well because you know if you want to uh, stream on this, you can. It's not quite the experience that you would get on an Apple TV or Nvidia Shield, but you can do it if you can only have one device and you really want to focus on a Zidoo uh, media player as that one device. Now, my recommendation is to use this device to play files and another device to do streaming on, um, but that's all up to you. So there you go. That's a, a quick look at the Zidoo UI and its capability to play files and act as a bridge for Rune and do all kinds of other things. 
Now it's time for the final word. So what do I think about the Zadu Z9X? I like it a lot. Now, why do I like it? It's because I think it's a little bit different and a little bit special compared to some of the other devices out there, especially at the lower end of the market. You know, this is a couple of hundred bucks. You're not spending a thousand dollars on this thing and you get a lot for your money. And here's some of the things that I think really stand out. One, there's an app for that. So you can install uh, this on your Android device, on your iOS device, and it will allow you to control a unit. So if you want to listen to music, but you don't want to turn your television on, you can do that with the app. You can fire it up. You can uh, listen to music that's on your NAS. You can use Rune with it. So is a really cool item that allows the box to be very, very flexible. Um, it has Control 4 integration. I don't use that yet. However, I do plan to implement Control 4 across my whole home, and that means that this box can participate in that larger automation system, which is really, really cool. Another item is that this does HDR, HDR10, and Dolby Vision. Not all players do that, and I think that's still special right now. I think eventually they'll all catch up and all be doing that. But today, if you're going to buy a unit, be very careful. Because if you need that, you need to make sure that what you are buying does it. So that's why this box stands a little bit taller than some of the competition out there. And I give it, you know, a full two thumbs up. So if you want a box, highly recommended. Go out and get it. I don't think you're going to have any qualms with this because it's really, really good especially if you buy the top end unit. It's really cool. All right, folks. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Remember, please like and subscribe, comment, do all those things. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.